The woman, fortunate to have survived the helicopter's crushing descent, found herself pinned beneath the unrelenting weight of its rotor blades, firefighters arriving promptly on the scene. Their combined strength was no match for the immense weight, one remaining to comfort the woman while the other, tasked with finding specialized equipment, prepared for the delicate operation of dismantling the aircraft's wing. Nice piece of jewelry, you got A lighthearted <laughs> comment that momentarily allowed the woman to transcend Please, her pain. Don't make me laugh. She chuckled, her spirit unbroken, the necessary tools arriving. The firefighters worked in tandem, meticulously removing each component until the woman was finally freed, it being then, amidst the wreckage, that they discovered the culprit entangled within the rotor blades, a small, unassuming drone. The true architect of the disaster was revealed, a trail of blood leading the firefighters to a nearby shed. They found a young boy, his grip still clutching the drone's controller. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I screwed up. My dad said not to fly it without him. Now Jack is gonna die. A helicopter lay crumpled atop a building, its descent orchestrated by the hand of a rogue drone, unbelievable. Following a trail of crimson, firefighters discovered a small shed, inside which a young boy clutched a remote control. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I screwed up. My dad said not to fly it without him. Now Jack is gonna die. It unfolded that the boys, in a reckless display of youthful exuberance, had been piloting the drone above the rooftop, oblivious to the aerial dance of the unsuspecting helicopter, kids these days. While one boy miraculously escaped the wreckage, Jack vanished amidst the debris. Talk about your worst nightmare. Fortunately, firefighters located him, his small form lying inert beside an electrical box. But Jack was seriously injured and lost consciousness. Ignoring the ominous warnings of high voltage, a firefighter instinctively moved to extract the boy, only to be halted by his partner, who had spotted a live wire spitting dangerously close thank goodness. With the power severed, they worked feverishly to free Jack, his leg ensnared by a thick cable. Every second counts. Navigating the treacherous electrical labyrinth with practiced precision, the firefighters finally extricated the boy. What a rescue. Engulfed in flames, the man's life hung precariously in the balance. Just as the firefighters extended the ladder, poised for a daring rescue, the man leaped from the inferno with commendable reflexes. The firefighters narrowly avoided a catastrophic Catastrophic collision, however, the man's subsequent words were met with profound disappointment. My wife. She was in the bathroom. Appalled to learn that the man had abandoned his wife, choosing self-preservation over loyalty, a sense of disbelief swept over the firefighters. Two brave souls charged into the heart of the blaze, meticulously scouring the bathroom, yet their desperate search yielded no trace of the missing woman. The fire's relentless advance forced a tactical retreat, but then, amidst the cacophony, Casey detected a faint cry for help. Astonishingly, there she was, concealed in the chaos. With heroic determination, they extracted Extracted the woman from the jaws of death just as the inferno reached its terrible crescendo. Later, back at the firehouse, a wave of disgust washed over them as they watched the rescued man on the local news. He was brazenly claiming credit for their heroic actions, attributing their success to his own courageous distraction. The audacity of some, they mused, truly knew no bounds. The man's leg, wedged firmly between the bars of the gate, forced his head to graze the pavement below. No immediate threat to his life, though. A curious detail, gate, when the entrance stood open and inviting. The answer? A sturdy lock securing the gate. What homeowner, the fire chief pondered, would lock themselves out? Dismissing concerned murmurs, the chief produced bolt cutters, determined to investigate. Inside, a scene of quiet terror. A woman, nursing wounds both visible and unseen, stared with wide, fear-filled eyes, crimson on the floor, drawing the fireman's attention, a more pressing emergency within. The chief elicited the woman's story, practiced calm. The man outside, no victim, but the perpetrator of a brutal attack. His escape, thwarted, left him wounded and at their mercy. 
Her chilling account complete, they assisted her from the house, ignoring the pleas of the man now rendered powerless. The arriving police witnessed the scene, apprehending the would-be thief, his cries for help swallowed by sirens, the arrival of justice. The woman's leg lay at a grotesque 90-degree angle, the result of a collision that had left the driver with his head impaled through the windshield. Triage dictated that the firefighters prioritize the driver's more immediate needs. As they work to stabilize him, a name escaped his lips, a desperate Keith. plea. Keith, is that your name? No, no. Help, Keith. Realization dawned. There was someone else in the mangled wreckage. A firefighter barked orders, dispatching his team to the rear of the vehicle. The back door yielded, revealing a man pinned beneath a twisted sprawl of metal, unconscious but mercifully alive. With painstaking care, they extracted him from the wreckage's grip. Meanwhile, the driver's head was carefully cradled in a fireman's jacket as a high-pitched whine announced the arrival of the jaws of life. The windshield surrendered with a shower of glass, granting the man passage to a waiting ambulance. The woman's condition remained precarious. Stabilizing her leg necessitated a maneuver that bordered on the barbaric. Yet, with practiced efficiency, the firefighters manipulated the mangled limb back into place before she succumbed to the seductive embrace of unconsciousness. A dart was sticking out of a guy's head like a bizarre new fashion statement, sending a shiver down the spines of the just-arrived firefighters. They sized up the offending dart. It was a solid inch, lodged in there like it bought real estate. Meanwhile, the darted dude was totally chill, practically begging the firefighters to yank it out pronto. But a quick-thinking firefighter played the voice of reason, warning that turning his head into a DIY project might just cancel his weekend plans permanently. Just then, his buddies showed up. One of them blurting out. You put a lime on his head and he had me try to hit it like Robin Hood or whatever. Blame game aside, the top priority shifted to making sure the dart didn't take a detour while they carted him off to the ER. A cup magically appeared to secure the dart. But just as they got their act together, the crowd decided it was the perfect time for a WWE audition. In the midst of the melee, Mr. Dart in the head, seizing his moment of dubious glory, yanked the dart out himself. The outcome? Not so heroic. He hit the deck, a victim of his own hubris and a few pints short of a full keg. Driven by an inexplicable compulsion, the man aimed to conquer the towering 66-story edifice with his bare hands. One misstep, gruesome demise. First responders, alerted, converged. Their strategy, intercepting the daredevil at the 30th floor. Upon reaching their designated level, peered downwards. The sight of a man unfazed, a plan, an aperture in the building's glassy facade, a temporary portal. However, as if sensing their intentions, the man's ascent intensified. With a sense of urgency, the firefighters deployed their suction cups, the rhythmic grinding of glass. Time, it seemed, was slipping. Finally, the glass panel yielded, access to the dizzying expanse beyond, the sheer verticality, enough to make even the most seasoned veteran shudder. As they moved to apprehend the climber, he, sensing their presence, attempted to shift, evading. With the clock ticking, the adjacent panel was swiftly removed. A firefighter lunged, successfully pulling the man back. His escapade thwarted. The man was apprehended. His reckless pursuit, a blatant disregard for his own life and a drain on public resources, was it truly worth it? Moments ago, an urgent distress call alerted firefighters to an industrial catastrophe. The complex enveloped in chlorine gas as they arrived. Two terrified employees emerged from the dense fog, gasping that another worker was trapped inside, the insidious gas spreading relentlessly, unleashing a pungent odor. The firefighters faced a perilous dual imperative, extract the trapped soul and neutralize the leak, knowing failure meant catastrophic expansion of the toxic cloud, imperiling innocent lives in neighboring communities. Adorned in crimson, they advanced into the eerie green abyss. Kelly's senses heightened as he identified the crisis's epicenter, a towering storage tank, its contents spewing forth. To his horror, an unidentified liquid had infiltrated the tank, reacting violently with the chlorine, and the unthinkable transpired. The tank erupted in a deafening roar, its mangled remains hurled skyward. Two firefighters caught in the blast. Kelly, his reflexes honed, sprang to his feet, searching for his comrades. One lying motionless, mask ripped away. With lightning speed, Kelly replaced the vital mask, dragging him clear of the inferno. The trapped worker, meanwhile, successfully extricated elsewhere. Now, one formidable task remained. Neutralize the chlorine and secure everyone's safety.
The man's chest was pierced by a branch, impaled with a violence that makes you wonder how this even happened. Witnessing this, Casey immediately sprang into action, orchestrating a rescue. A firefighter, her composure unwavering, proposed a daring maneuver, ascend the tree and alleviate the man's weight, lest a forceful extraction prove instantly fatal, you see. With remarkable speed, the firefighter ascended, discovering that the victim remained conscious amazingly. Perched precariously on the trunk, she secured the man's clothing in a vice-like grip simultaneously. Simultaneously, two more firefighters ascended a ladder. Their movements synchronized and precise like clockwork. Casey stabilized the man's legs as his rescuer fastened a harness. Good teamwork. Okay. Kelly, wielding a chainsaw, began severing the branch. The sound echoing. Freed, the man was gently lowered, the harness ensuring a controlled descent, very carefully. Firefighters carefully maneuvered him onto a stretcher, in the recovery position, the safest position. With haste, they transported him to the hospital, leaving a sense of awe. What a rescue. What events led to the man's impalement, it really makes you think. The driver was ensnared within the mechanical jaws of the car wash. Moments prior, firefighters received a frantic call. The driver attempted to exit his vehicle mid-wash, compounding the crisis. The emergency shutoff remained unresponsive. Cries for help emanated from the heart of the machine. Kelly, a beacon of resolve, pressed forward. Through the relentless gyrations, he discerned the driver, his left leg pinned beneath the car. Kelly directed his team to halt the machinery. With swift one member located the auxiliary circuit board. A crowbar yielded access to the electrical panel, disabling each circuit. The car wash ceased, though water continued its cascade. Kelly dispatched his team to staunch the flow while others converged upon the driver. His voice trembling, he recounted his actions. He neglected to secure the car door. Reaching to rectify his oversight, his phone tumbled. In his attempt to retrieve it, the machinery swept him beneath the vehicle. As the car was lifted, agony erupted from the man. Freed, he was transported to the hospital. The inebriated man hurled his bottle at the firefighter before jamming his foot on the accelerator and fleeing the scene. But his retribution was swift and brutal as he collided with a nearby sedan. Moments before, the firefighter had been sharing a kiss with his partner in the bar when the intoxicated man, observing them, had slurred. Hey, didn't this used to be a firefighter bar? Wouldn't it become a gay club, huh? Hey, what's your problem? As the drunk prepared to escalate the confrontation, Kelly intervened, forcing him to retreat in sullen silence. Now, at the crash site, the firefighter, setting aside the prior altercation, moved to administer aid, but a sudden explosion ripped through the mangled vehicle, knocking him to the ground and urging his partner to seek help from the bar. The firefighter, braving the inferno, wrenched open the car door, only to find his own escape route blocked by the raging flames. His team arrived in the nick of time, extinguishing the blaze and pulling the drunkard from the wreckage. Are you okay? Let me see. You're not even gonna thank the man? Faced with such ingrained prejudice, the firefighter and his partner could only depart, their hearts heavy with disappointment. A man. A light bulb lodged firmly in his mouth, you see. His sister recounted their Christmas tree decorating, her brother holding the bulb between his teeth to connect the wires. Believe it or not, his oral cavity, stretched too far, allowed the smooth glass sphere to slip past his teeth. Oh boy. Emergency responders arrived to find the man kneeling, trying to extract the luminous intruder. Can you imagine? They intervened, cautioning against further manipulation, lest the glass shatter, inflicting lacerations or worse, it's true. The man questioned questioned how the bulb could enter, yet refused to exit. What a question. The paramedic, armed with pliers, instructed him to remain immobile as she attempted to gain purchase on the bulb. Get this. The confined space offered no leverage. Unbelievable. A drinking straw. The paramedic hoping to create suction, but the man's movements thwarted her efforts. Talk about a challenge. The paramedic repositioned behind the man, encircling his abdomen, and, with a concerted effort, the bulb was expelled. What a relief.